Very few claims, it seems, are ever made by commercial airline pilots. Captain Neil Daniels, however, is an exception to this rule. On March 12, 1977, United Airlines Flight 94 from San Francisco to Boston was suddenly diverted over New York State. The pilot, Captain Daniels, claims his jet was being controlled for a time by an unknown object. We we're flying Flight 94 just a few miles south of Syracuse, New York. The co-pilot was flying the airplane. He was using his autopilot, which is connected to the captain's compass. The compass part itself is out in the left wing tip of the aircraft. According to Captain Neil Daniels, the airplane started to turn approximately 15 degrees to the left, all by itself, without any direction from Captain Daniels or his co-pilot. The DC-10, with 200 passengers at 37,000 feet, had changed course. Instinctively, you look out the left window, and there was what we saw. It was a very, very bright, bright light. The intensity was that of a, let's say, a flash, a flash bulb. As we went into this turn, the Boston Air Traffic Control Center said, uh, United 94, um, what are your intentions? And I, I think I said, well, we don't know exactly, but we'll let you know when we find it out. Captain Daniel says he and his crew watched the intense light for three minutes as the light pulled the plane towards it. Daniels claims the passengers were unaware of any of these events. When I first saw it, it was forward of the wing, hard to tell exactly how far out it was, but it was very, very brilliant, whatever. I watched it disappear back over the wing tip and back into the eight o'clock position at a, and accelerate at a very rapid rate. It was zip and gone just like that. Captain Daniels radioed air control. He wanted to know if there was any traffic to the left of Flight 94. He was told there was nothing appearing on radar. The bright light and the source of the magnetic interference to the aircraft navigational system was a mystery. Flight engineer went back to his seat and he said, I don't know if I'm gonna tell anybody anything about this at all. I'm not going to say anything. We we're due to come back early, so I didn't want to uh, to uh, get involved with the military or the or anybody like that on all night questioning and answers and that type of thing. So we opted not to uh, to report it when we got in. Captain Daniels was haunted by memories of the incident, but continued to keep it a secret. Six months later, however. He decided to tell his boss what had happened. So I told him, I said, this happened last spring that I had a sighting. And his reaction was, I'm sorry to hear that. I said, why? He said, well, bad things happen to people that have had sightings like this. And I thought to myself, what? So. I shut up and I never said a word about it ever again for about seven years. Okay. This is Neil Daniels retired in 1980 and only then felt comfortable enough to discuss the incident. He says commercial airline pilots who reveal their UFO sightings pay a high price for speaking out. Daniels is still unable to explain the source of the bright light but remains convinced about what he and his crew witnessed. Since the incident, Neil Daniels is the only one who has been willing to tell his story. Today, his flight engineer is a commercial airline pilot, and the co-pilot is now retired. Both have refused to come forward. I've been in contact with these two gentlemen. I can't give you their names. They don't want to, they don't want to be known. And I've talked to them about it, and they said, just disregard. I don't want, to, don't want to discuss it. I'm a little short guy here in the middle. Okay, this was my... Captain Daniels, a veteran of dozens of bombing raids during World War II, is now retired. He wants to go on record while he is still alive in hopes that it might encourage other pilots to come forward. 22 years after his encounter, 
he still believes there are things going on in the skies beyond our understanding. One of the things that I really enjoyed about flying was in the winter months was to take off and head out of the East Coast in the evening and we'd get away from the cities and look out at the dark and look up right up there and there was Orion. And there was his dog star right there. Uh, Gemini, the twins up here. We are a tiny, tiny speck in the Milky Way, which opens up my mind to accepting the possibility of almost anything. In 1977, the United Airlines Flight 94 supposedly had an encounter with a UFO. Captain Neil Daniels, the pilot, claims the plane's navigational equipment was disrupted by a brilliant light, which sent it off course. Fearing for his job, Captain Daniels did not come forward with his story until his retirement in 1980. Four years later, research scientist Richard Haynes heard about the DC-10 case from other UFO investigators and contacted Neil Daniels. Haynes has researched over 3,000 cases of UFO incidents involving aircraft. He believes the pilot is a credible witness. I've come to realize how experienced he is. When this event occurred, he was in a position to evaluate what it might be, and yet he couldn't. And that's another reason I got involved. Unlike UFO sightings based solely on eyewitness reports, Haynes believes the Flight 94 incident is especially difficult to discount. The Neil Daniels case is a very significant case because it involves uh, multiple eyewitnesses in the cockpit. It involves electromagnetic uh, effects on board the aircraft, which uh, have immediate uh, implications for air safety, and it involves a uh, alleg apparently or an allegedly independent object nearby the aircraft which seemed to cause the changes in the cockpit instruments. Over the years, as compelling evidence of UFO activity across the country continued to mount, Richard Haynes and other UFO investigators urged the mainstream scientific community to take a serious look at cases like Flight 94. Finally, in late 1997, philanthropist Lawrence Rockefeller hosted a gathering at his family's New York estate of leading scientists and UFO investigators to examine evidence from some of the best documented UFO cases. One of the cases reviewed by the committee was Captain Neil Daniels' alleged encounter. Richard Haynes was the UFO investigator who presented the case. We were not challenged to justify UFOs or to prove the existence of UFOs, but to present physical evidence that we felt was credible uh, and backed up by some scientific and technological uh, data. And the review panel's objective was to help us refine our approach and methodology. A panel of 18 experts, physicists, aerospace engineers, astronomers, and planetary scientists reviewed the material presented. They quickly learned, however, that as with the age-old question of the existence of God, the existence of UFOs was equally hard to examine. We were all very, very open-minded. I think that's an important thing to keep in mind. But also, we weren't believers. We were basically there to say, show me. Richard Haynes told the panel that the inexplicable connection between the brilliant light and the plane's performance made this case especially believable. This is important because uh, I made it very clear at that meeting in New York that as soon as the object went away, all the compasses immediately came back to normal. We call this a transient effect. Members of the review panel wanted to know if the data in this case had been retested under similar conditions. They soon discovered that the scientific method was almost impossible to apply in the cases of UFOs. It's very clear for many hundreds of thousands of sightings now that these are transient effects, that cannot be reproduced. If they could, science would be looking at them. 
And if a phenomenon will not repeat itself, how can they do that? 